Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 27th of August. At least 26 tests positive for COVID-19 at orphanage in India's Mumbai. Evacuation efforts continue at Kabul airport after deadly attack. And newly formed the CPN Unified Socialists to join Deobal-led Nepal government. And now for all the details. At least 26 people, including children, have tested positive for coronavirus at an orphanage in India's western Mumbai city, an official said on Friday, adding that they are in stable condition. The outbreak comes amid concerns about a possible third wave of COVID-19 in the country and apprehensions that children would be particularly vulnerable to it. Authorities in Mumbai city in India's western Maharashtra state sealed an orphanage after at least 26 people, including children, were tested positive for coronavirus, an official said on Friday. The cases were reported after some children at the St. Joseph's Home and Nursery showed mild symptoms of coronavirus. Out of those tested positive, four have been admitted to hospital, while the rest are under quarantine. The outbreak comes amid concerns about a possible third wave of COVID-19 in India and apprehensions that children would be particularly vulnerable to it. Agri Pada mein ye chote bachcho ka ana thasram tha aur usme totally 95 bachche the. Usme se kuch bachcho ko thode symptoms dikhai diye, khasi, bukhar, normally symptoms the. To ye symptom pe maa pe check kiya gaya. To kam se kam 24 ya 26 bachche isme positive aaye hai. और कोविड पॉजिटिव होने के कारण बाकी के चार बच्चों को नायर में एडमिट किया गया है और बाकी के सारे बच्चों को रिचार्ड एंड क्रूडास में वहां पे उनको ऐसे ही रखा गया है यानी क्वारंटाइन किया गया है मीनवाइल इंडियस इंटीरियर मिनिस्ट्री हैज आस्क केरला एंड महाराष्ट्र टू कंसीडर नाइट कर्फ्यूज इन एरियाज विद हाई कोविड-19 केस नंबर्स टू कर्ब द रैपिड सर्ज इन बोथ द स्टेट्स Kerala on India's southern tip has accounted for nearly 60% of the new cases in the past week and more than half of the total active cases, followed by 16% in the western state of Maharashtra. As of Friday, infections tally in India stood at 32.6 million with 436,861 deaths so far. Cases in India had fallen to a five-month low of 25,166 in the middle of the month, but have risen sharply in the last three days, mainly in Kerala, that recently celebrated a big festival during which families typically come together. India has so far administered more than 611 million vaccine doses, giving at least one dose to more than half of its 944 million adults, and the required two doses to about 15 percent. In news from Afghanistan, the U.S. forces helping to evacuate Afghans desperate to flee Taliban rule braced for more attacks on Friday after an Islamic State suicide bomber killed 85 people, including 13 U.S. soldiers, outside the gates of Kabul airport. Evacuation efforts continued at Hamid Karzai International Airport in Kabul on Friday, hours after two blasts and gunfire rocked the area outside the airport on Thursday evening. Evacuation efforts continued at Hamid Karzai International Airport in Kabul on Friday, hours after an Islamic State suicide bomber killed scores of civilians and 13 U.S. soldiers outside the gates of the airport. Evacuees were seen boarding a flight and a plane was spotted taking off from the airport on Friday as efforts to continue to evacuate people from Afghanistan after the Taliban took control earlier this month. Two blasts and gunfire rocked the area outside the airport on Thursday evening, witnesses said, killing over 85 people, that that toll is expected to rise. Islamic State, an enemy of the Taliban as well as the West, said one of its suicide bombers targeted translators and collaborators with the American army. U.S. forces are racing to complete their withdrawal from Afghanistan by an August 31st deadline set by President Joe Biden. 
Biden vowed on Thursday that United States will hunt down the attackers of twin explosions and said he has asked the Pentagon to develop plans to strike back at Islamist militants. To those who carried out this attack, as well as anyone who wishes America harm, know this, we will not forgive. We will not forget. We will hunt you down and make you pay. I will defend our interests and our people with every measure at my command. General Frank McKenzie, head of U.S. Central Command, said U.S. commanders were on alert for more attacks by Islamic State, including possibly rockets or car bombs targeting the airport. In the past 12 days, Western countries have evacuated nearly 100,000 people. But they acknowledged that thousands will be left behind when the last U.S. troops leave at the end of the month. Several Western countries said the airlift of civilians was now effectively over. In news from Pakistan, hundreds of Afghans have continued to crowd at the zero point in the Pakistani city of Chaman, which borders Afghanistan as they flee the war-torn country following Taliban's takeover. Pakistan has also allowed transit of passengers upon request by the U.S. and the NATO to help in the evacuations from Afghanistan by August 31. Hundreds of Afghans have continued to crowd at the zero point in the Pakistani city of Chaman, which borders Afghanistan as they flee the war-torn country following Taliban's takeover. The Taliban have encouraged Afghans to stay, while saying those with permission to leave will still be allowed to do so once commercial flights resume and they will respect human rights. But despite Taliban pledges, many fear a return to the repressive past. While Pakistan Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi this week visited Afghanistan's neighbors to discuss the evolving situation and best future strategy, Director General of Pakistan Army's Media Wing, Inter Services Public Relations, Major General Babar Iftikhar on Friday emphasized that the Pakistani side of the Pakistan-Afghan border is secure and stable. Meanwhile, following requests by the U.S. and NATO to provide assistance in evacuations from Afghanistan, Pakistan has allowed transit of passengers coming from war torn country. In news from Nepal, Chairman of the newly formed CPN Unified Socialist Madhav Kumar Nepal has formally announced that his party will join Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deobal-led government. Madhav Kumar Nepal, a rebel leader of CPN-UML, on Thursday urged his former party members to revolt against CPN-UML chair K.P. Sharma Oli to become free from his oppression. The newly formed CPN Unified Socialist led by Madhav Kumar Nepal on Thursday announced to join Nepal's Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deoba led coalition government soon. The announcement came a day after the election commission granted official recognition to the party which was created after splitting from the CPN UML led by former Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli. Madhav Kumar Nepal addressing a press meet said his party will extend cooperation to the Nepali Congress, Maoist Centre and Janata Samajwadi Party, Nepal. He blamed CPN UML chairman Oli for exercising autocratic principle and urged CPN UML lawmakers and members to revolt against Oli to become free from his oppression. The move to form the new party came after Madhav Kumar Nepal along with 13 lawmakers was expelled from CPN UML earlier this month by KP Sharma Oli for defying party whip and supporting the then opposition alliance led by Deoba in May this year in its bid to topple Oli's government. In news from Sri Lanka, amid the rising COVID-19 cases in Sri Lanka, the country's health minister, Dr. Kehelia Rambokwela, has said that all citizens above the age of 18 years will be fully vaccinated before the end of November. The island nation is currently under a 10-day nationwide lockdown to curb the virus spread. Amid the rising COVID-19 cases in Sri Lanka, the country's health minister, Dr. Kehelia Rambukwela, on Thursday said that all citizens over the age of 18 will be fully vaccinated before the end of November. 
Sri Lanka is presently administering the vaccines only to those above 30 and to students who need to travel overseas for education as it earlier planned to complete the vaccination of all citizens over 30 years of age by mid-September. The country is currently under a 10-day nationwide lockdown in an effort to curb the virus spread. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa earlier on Thursday said, closing the country for a long time is not a practical solution and he urged people for support to save the country from the epidemic by following protocols. Sri Lanka, which has witnessed a series of lockdowns and curfews to contain the spread of COVID-19, has been hit hard in terms of its economy. As of Friday, infections tally in the island nation stood at 412,370 with 8,157 deaths so far. Moving on to news from Maldives. The contract for the largest ever infrastructure project in Maldives funded by India was signed between the two countries on Thursday. In a series of tweets, the Maldivian Foreign Minister Abdullah Shahid thanked Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and counterpart S. Jay Shankar for supporting the development journey of the Maldives. Under the Greater Malay Connectivity Project, a 6.74-kilometer long bridge and causeway link will be built to connect capital city Malay with adjoining islands of Willingly, Gulifalhu and Thilafushi. Funded under a grant of $100 million and a line credit of $400 million from India, this will be the largest infrastructure project in the Maldives, officials said. Indian construction giant Afcons has been tasked with completing the project. Enhancing regional connectivity has been a key priority for New Delhi and Malay. A village in India's eastern Jharkhand, branded as the state's first aloe vera village, has been able to turn things around for its residents during the lockdown. The cultivation started under Indian Council of Agricultural Research, Birsa Agricultural University, in December 2018, and this has allowed women to earn a livelihood and become self reliant. A village in India's eastern Ranchi city has earned the name of Aloe Vera Village as the cultivation of the medicinal plant is done in abundance, helps villagers earn a good income. With every household in Duri village cultivating Aloe Vera near their houses, the plant has not only added beauty to their courtyards but has also helped them sell it and earn money. The production of aloe vera in the village has also allowed women to engage in its cultivation, earn a livelihood and become self-reliant. Women farmers leader Manju Kachap said around one quintal of aloe vera was cut and sold in a month. Here, the people who are in the village are in the village. People come from the monthly to one quintal of aloe vera. It is a little late in the village, it seems to be ready to be ready to be ready to be ready to be ready. The aloe vera cultivation in the village began in 2018 when the villagers received training under the Indian Council of Agricultural Research, Birsa Agricultural University, and slowly started earning income with the knowledge of the plant. In 2018, we have been training aloe vera in the village. We have been training aloe vera in the village. We have been training aloe vera in the village. The plant is used in Ayurvedic, homeopathic and allopathic medicines for ailments related to skin, digestion among others. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. At least 26 tests positive for COVID-19 at orphanage in India's Mumbai. Evacuation efforts continue at Kabul airport after deadly attack. And newly formed CPN Unified Socialists to join Deobal-led Nepal government. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.